football swings into the stretch drive on the NCAA today, and it's here at Illinois Memorial Stadium, dedicated 59 years ago when Red Grange galloped all over Michigan, and where the Fighting Illini and Wolverines today will all but settle the Big Ten title. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome to the NCAA Today. Once again, the coach, Eric Parsegan, Pat O'Brien, he's on hand, too, and they'll help me sort out the X's and O's here this afternoon. Now, you know, it is not likely we'll see the kind of day Red Grange had on October 18th, 1924, when he passed for a 6 TD in routing Michigan. But this is a day of big games that will go a long, long way towards settling the New Year's Day bowl picture, but none more important than this game that you'll see right here in Champaign, Illinois. The Corks have been popping all week as the Fighting Illini look for their first win ever over Bo Schembechler. You know, for the campus and the community, it's been a week-long party with the day targeted as New Year's Eve and the 4th of July all wrapped up as one. And in Champaign, fans of the Fighting Illini hope that everything is coming up roses. But a disc jockey tried somewhat to keep things in perspective in that city. Just a game. Just a simple football Just game. Just a game. Yeah, uh-huh. The fans painted the town red and themselves orange and blue, showing the school colors as they sang the local hit, Rose Bowl Bound. Rose Bowl Bound. You'd have to be an aging undergraduate to remember the last time the Illini went to Pasadena on New Year's Day. That was 1964, and their center was a junior named Dick Butkus. He also played a little linebacker for that team, a whole lot of linebacker, as Illinois downed Washington 17-7. Now the fans hope today will be as sweet as that yesterday. I think that this weekend is it. I've already bought a ticket to Pasadena for <laughs> Christmas break, so I'm ready. I think we're going to blow them out. <laughs> yeah. It's a wealth of riches around Chicago. The White Sox, now they can cheer for the fighting Illini down in Champaign. That's a catchy little tune, Rose Bowl Bound. I wonder if they'll be playing it next week. Wouldn't they love to be going, though? In Champaign, just another big game for Bo Schembechler in Michigan. He's been there so many times in the past. But Illinois is playing great defense. That's the one thing that has separated this ball club from all the others that they've had, is that this one is playing great defense. And so along with their offense, it's always been capable. Um, they're, they're, they're an excellent football team. Joe, the game that has been in so many times before, he's remained aloof all week long. Now, for Illinois, it's a watershed game, a game that can't be a factor in the Big Ten. They want to smell the roses, they're going to have to stop the quarterback, Steve Smith, number 16 of Michigan. He's an option quarterback, he's a scrambler, the impromptu play, can run the quarterback draw. And Bo Schumacher says about him, he is a threat to throw the football, and you have to be concerned about that. For Illinois, Jack Trudeau from California is their quarterback, and he's a man that Mike White says is made of the right stuff, has the right temperament to play quarterback. But really what has got Illinois here today, today is their defense. They play in a tough, aggressive 4-3 defense. They blitz their linebackers, their safeties. They come out after you all over the football field. They're led by their defensive lineman, number 53, Mark Butkus, and number 96, Don Thorpe. But if it comes down to it today, Michigan will go for two points. And it's a situation because the Big Ten says that teams with identical Big Ten records look to head-to-head -head competition. And, Gary, the interesting thing is Michigan has tried three two-point conversions this year and has been unsuccessful on all of them. Pat, on the other end, Illinois is predetermined they will go for the tie because Michigan last went to the Rose Bowl. They had identical records. The Illini would be in Pasadena. This is the big one. This is the one they're waiting for, the run for the Roses. Eighth-ranked Michigan, ninth-ranked Illinois. Just a superb afternoon for football. Temperature 55 degrees. You can see the wind is gusting and does in Memorial Stadium. The referees from the Big Ten Conference, Tom Quinn, the Chicago, Illinois product, Ed Hassel, Wayne Neese. And the kicker is Todd Slopey. Slopey kicking off to Dwayne Pugh, number 18 of Illinois. That's a line drive, and Pugh will have to go back and be sure that he gets on that. At the 20-yard line now, Illinois will set it up. Michigan won the toss, but they waved it off. So now let's set 
The offense for Michigan. Jack Trudeau at quarterback. He's thrown for 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns this season. Dwight Beverly had 179 yards, a career high against Purdue last week. And in the offensive line, Chris Babiar. Mike White calls him our best offensive lineman. And Tim Brewster, the tight end, had 46 catches last year. That's a record at Illinois for tight end. The Illini from the 20-yard line. Cam Benson, number 40, split out. The running backs, Thomas Rooks and Beverly. Shoot out a throw on first down. Dropped by Beverly. You can see some of the emotion, some of the tension early in this game. And now, Michigan defensively. Number two defensive team in the country. Up front, these guys are smart. They are scrappers. And the linebackers, Carlton Rolls, he had 14 tackles last week against Iowa. But the wild man is number 42, Mike Mallory. He is the son of Bill Mallory, the coach at Northern Illinois. And the defensive back, John Law, he's a captain today, has his hands full with Trudeau. Second down 10 for the Illini. Three wideouts in on this play, and Thomas Rook gets the call for a yard. You mentioned three wideouts by Illinois. This is what Mike White likes to do, as we saw Lou Holtz do a few weeks ago, come out and probe a defense early on. His first play, he used three, uh, uh, two tight ends. His second play here, he used three wide receivers. He wants to give them a lot of looks early on as he sets up his game plan. It's virtually third and 10 for Trudeau out of Livermore, California. Protection breaking down. That is to put very close to the first down. Mitchell Brooking came up with it. It looks like they will mark it for the first down. Jack Trudeau, the quarterback, as you look at him there, is not noted for his fleet footness, but he did avoid a rush here. You're going to see some pressure by the Michigan defense. He is 6'4", he's 190 pounds, but you see he's got pretty good foot speed. And the nice thing here about Brookins, the receiver, number 33, he came back to the football, greeted the football for the catch in the first down. Good play. That has to give Trudeau some encouragement, some confidence on a third down to convert it. The pitch to Rook. Rook's the sophomore. Out of St. Louis, to cross the 35, a pickup of five. Mike Mallory, 42, and on the stop. Thomas Rooks is a bruiser, hard-nosed football player. Mike White, a native of California. He'd like to get back to Pasadena on January 2nd. <laughs> a nice trip for Michael. It'll be second down five. David Boatwright has come in now, the wide receiver for Illinois. Three wide outs. Trudeau with lots of time. Williams. Boy, that ball was up for grab. Almost intercepted by Tim Anderson, number 57, a middle linebacker for Michigan. But Trudeau, Pat, had a lot of time to throw the football. Well, that is the key today. If he can have that kind of protection, he is very good at audibleizing, picking up secondary receivers as we look at the Michigan defense. This is a defense, as you mentioned, the second in the nation in defense, they're first in the Big Ten. But Bo Schimbeckler admitted they really have not played the kind of offense that they're facing today. Oh, Schimbeckler, 15th year at Michigan. Golden, Benson, Williams split out. Third and five. Williams... He can't hang on. He is really rocked that time. That was Carlton Rose, 89. He was the man, Pat, that last year stopped Illinois on that fourth down and goal at the two. Well, you're right. And Carlton Rose made another fine play here as you watch in a third and five situation. Again, pretty good protection by Trudeau. The same route they ran earlier to, to David Williams. They felt that they could come back to it. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. But Carlton Rose is there to put the stop and really separate Williams from the football. They kick the football. Chris Sigourney out of Elgin, Illinois. And back deep is Evan Cooper, a senior out of Miami, Florida. Left foot kick. He hit it well. Cooper at the 20. He had an alley, and he picked up 10 to the 30-yard line. Tony Scarcelli making the tackle, a 45-yard kick. They'll mark that officially as a 12-yard return. All right, let's set it offensively now for the Wolverines. Quarterback Steve 
Smith, Bo says he knows how to win. He has four or five speed, a very good option runner. Number 20, Rick Rogers, leads the Big Ten in rushing. He's tied for the scoring leadership with nine touchdowns. In the offensive line, All-American Stephon Humphreys has 3.8 GPA in engineering science. He's a, quite a player. And Sim Nelson has 23 catches. He's the tight end, and Steve Smith likes to go to him. And here is Steve Smith. He's had an inflammation of his shoulder that cut down his passing statistics. Two tight ends in, a mishandled play. Smith gets on it. They'll lose a couple of yards. Again, a little shaky. Both teams showing some nervousness in the early going. And this is a different type of Michigan play because you don't see Michigan put the ball on the carpet much. They win with ball control football. They win with good defense and field position. They don't turn the ball over much. So that a, 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 has to be a surprise to Bo Schembechler. And not a pleasant one. He was not too happy about it. Lost the three. Second down, 13. Garrett Rogers in the backfield. This is Rogers. Cutback. That's something that concerns Illinois is the cutback running, not only of this man, but Steve Smith. Daryl Thompson, 99, made the stop. Let's look at that defense. Look at Don Thorpe, number 96. He's the man who leads the team with six sacks. Mark Budges is playing with a lame knee, but they said they couldn't keep him out of here with a herd of wild horses. If they play a 4-3 defense, Mike Weingrad's the man in the middle. And back deep, watch number 12, Craig Wolf. He was a freshman All-American. He'll blitz a lot. And this is a situation exactly that he likes to blitz. Third and seven. Smith looks like he might be changing the play. Illinois jumping around, taking a lot of time. That will be very close to the first down. Sim Nelson, the tight end. They had a third and seven, and they do have the first down. That sets it up at the 40, almost the 43-yard line. Nelson, a sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Football is a game of adjustment. You see the tight end, Sim Nelson, move. Now, the defenders don't touch him. They point at him, but he gets back. He's a tight end. He's allowed to move and get back in position. He does that, and they completed the ball to Sim Nelson for the first down. The Big Ten, one of three conferences that uses seven officials. They've added an extra this year. Smith on the option and gives up the middle to Garrett. Eddie Garrett out of Milwaukee. According to coach Mike White, he has the zip to go away from him. He's much improved from a year ago. Don Thorpe, 96, will be credited with the stop. You mentioned that Illinois is concerned with the cutback. It's a good point because they have Illinois has changed their defense a little bit this week and gone from a 4-3 defense and moved one of their outside linebackers inside to be concerned about the cutbacks of Smith and Rogers. On the other hand, Bo Schembechler says we can't let them force us into bad play. Steve Smith. And that pass will be complete to the 40-yard line. Benson Bean, first down, a 16-yard completion. Bean, who had 14 coming into the day. Jerry, you mentioned that Steve Smith has had some shoulder problems. But Bo told us that he's healthy, that he's capable of throwing the football, and he throws a very nice throw as he rolls out to his left, throws the most difficult pass in football, really, the 15-yard out to Vince Bean. That's his 15th catch for a first down. Pat, I get the idea that Illinois is not respecting Smith's passing. That might backfire. They have eight people up front to playing man-to-man -man defense. And Smith is healthy, and he may make him pay for it. Again, Smith taking a lot of time. Gives to the fullback, Garrett. Garrett inside the 35. Archie Carter, 84. And Mark Butkus, 53, combining on the stop. Eddie Garrett was one of two freshmen a year ago to play at fullback. A look at the offensive line surge, and Stephon Humphreys in particular, number 76 there, as he clears the way for Garrett. He is the All-American boast that he's the best guard I've ever had at Michigan. Second down three, a gain of seven. That's the way they want to do it on first down. Bean is split to the bottom of the screen. To Rodgers, and Rodgers is going to be short. He needed to make it to the 30-yard line. He did not get that far. The strength of that Illinois defense is the middle. This time, Clinton Haynes on the stop. But Thorpe Butchett, the middle linebackers, and they like their secondary, especially the safety. Third and one. Somehow when you think of third and one, you think of Michigan, don't you? Yep. 
This is their kind of football. Nelson, Parsons, two tight ends are in. Bean split up. Smith to Rogers. He has it, I believe, across the 30-yard line. Stephon Humphreys, the Outland Trophy candidate, they ran behind his position. And that's a lot of man to run behind. You're right. Behind Humphreys and Doug James, the weak side tackle. Third and one. They put the guy seven yards deep in the backfield. Let him follow the blocks. He gets a nice block by his fullback, Garrett. But this is the kind of football that, that Michigan wants to be in, be in the situation. Third and one. As we look at Don Thorpe, number 96. Out of the play, really. They say his, his, the key thing that he has is strong hands. He's able to get rid of blocks. But he was out of that play. First down now for the Wolverines. Just inside the 30 of Illinois. It's their first drive of the game. A cut back to Rogers. He has some trouble with the footing to the 27-yard line. Keith Taylor over there, number four. Ocean Beckler, who likes to call a lot of the plays. As you look at Taylor, he started the last two games. He came on. He was really pushed into a starting job due to injuries. He started against Wisconsin, and he was equal to it. He's fond with two interceptions this season. Second down, eight. Mike White says we'll probe offensively try to find something, but they got to get the football. Looks like the blitz might be coming. They blitz the safety, and Rogers is to the 21-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. That time, David Edwards was coming on the blitz. You're absolutely right, and you called it. And college football is a game of adjustments, and we're watching two quarterbacks today who can call audibles and put their team in good situations. Steve Smith has done that twice in this drive, called audibles as he did there. He saw the blitz, ran away from it, and he saw the big game by Rodgers. Good play, good audible by Steve Smith. Third down and two now for the Wolverines. Again, two tight ends are in. They're taking a lot of time on this drive. 7.19 left in the first quarter. Smith to Garrett. Oh, he's working hard. He needed to get inside the 20. We'll have to wait and see. Weingrad, 36. Garcelli, 95, in on the tackle for Illinois. And they're going to measure. Don Thorpe, number 96, he has to be a factor today, but he is neutralized there by the center, Tom Dixon, another All-American candidate, and right guard Jerry Diorio, number 64. Thorpe is going to have to fight off those blocks and become a factor and stop the teams on second and third and short situations if Illinois is going to have a chance. Well, Bo told us we have a good blocking front, and you're seeing it in action now. Yeah, but the strength of this Illinois defense, too, is up in those front four guys, as we mentioned. Butkus, Thorpe, right up the middle, right up the gut. Now they're short, as you can see. Now what do you do? Fourth down. Take an isolated look at Stephon Humphrey. He's the left guard there, number 76. You're going to look at him step around on the nose, man, put the block on him. He buries him. He calls him the finest guard in the history of Michigan, Bo Jim Beckler does. Fourth and inches. you a charge timeout until you've used all your timeouts and then he will set you five yard penalties and we talked with Bo Schembechler he is very much concerned about this we talked with Bo last night he says the officials have to help his quarterback out and if it comes down to it they have to assess Illinois and penalties well in the past they used to have a scoreboard here they still do at the other end of the field which would make a lot of noise and they finally got them to quit using that Part of the problems you have when you go on the road, right? Well, Michigan couldn't even keep their own crowd quiet last week. They had a penalty assessed against them. Well, they'll try it again. Rick Rogers. Boy, it's close.
I think Bo thinks he got it. <laughs> think he's trying to influence those referees? I tell you, if we talked to him last night, we were ready to play after talking to him. <laughs> he got me fired up. He almost signed your son up. <laughs> they got the first down. Line of scrimmage to 19, and Mike White is saying, we got to get the football. If we're going to probe them, we've got to have the football. Six and a half minutes left in this first quarter. This is the 13th play of this drive. Rodgers again. Rodgers, according to Coach Jim Beckler, is a stone-cold athlete. Have you ever heard that expression before? It was never said about me. I know that. A long strider. Time continuing to move. Daryl Thompson making the tackle. Second down and nine. This is Michigan football. Just grind it out. Eat up the clock. Get field position. Second and nine, Smith. Rogers trying to go somewhere, and Illinois is there. Craig Swope, number 12. We told you how effective he is. Tremendous pursuit by the Illinois defense. They're going to set up a screenplay, and Rick Rogers really does all that he can with it. You see Smith looking downfield, then he dumps it off to Rogers. But look at all the blue jerseys there to corral Rick Rogers. There's nowhere for him to go, and Swope is right there. Good, keen defense, aggressive defense. That's what Illinois does best. There is Swope out of Fort Pierce, Florida. He was an outstanding basketball player, averaged 32 points a game. He led the state. Amazing how many players from Florida in this football game as we watch Steve Smith call a timeout. Steve Smith wants to discuss this one as we have a third and 13. And here's part of the sellout. This town has been on its ear for a long time as they wait the big one. Sim Nelson, the tight end. Smith showed some courage that time. He had somebody in his face. We talked about how much pressure Illinois can put on you. Watch 23, Vince Osby, the outside linebacker. He comes in. He is not even touched. He is right in Smith's face. Smith stands in the pocket, though, and delivers the ball, which should have been caught to Sim Nelson, number 95. He's def Edwards is defending, but that ball should have been caught for a first down. A 38-yard field goal attempt by number 19. Bob Bergeron, who beat Iowa last week, has got the distance. It's good. He had the win to his back, and Bergeron need a nothing lead at the 444 mark. Well, Michigan is on the scoreboard. They took eight minutes and 19 seconds to get those three points. Bo talking to Steve Smith. Steve Smith is really, as he said, Bo's kind of quarterback, a competitor. Slopey kicking off for Michigan. Here is back for Illinois. Very well kicked, and Pugh won't bring it out. I don't know about you, Pat, but I'm really looking forward to what's following us later today. The debut of Ralph Sampson for the Houston Rockets, the three-time college player of the year. And that will be going against Artis Gilmore, San Antonio. There's going to be a lot of jumping and slapping <laughs> the ball around on the board. And that will also mark the debut of a new member of our CBS Sports crew, Tom Heinsohn, the XL Great, along with Dick Stockton. So stay with us. I'm looking forward to that. Heinsohn had some interesting things to say about Sampson. Wanted to find out whether he could be physical enough underneath the board. Well, I'll tell you, the guy is an athlete. From the 20-yard line, Illinois trailing by three. Trudeau giving to Rook, and Rook. Gets five, maybe six on the play. As we think back on Michigan's field goal in their the last drive, it was classic Michigan football. They ran the football. It, Michigan offense is a tailback-dominated football team. Steve Smith completed a couple of passes, but Rodgers was the key, and they got into a lot of third and one, third and twos. They converted a fourth and inches. That was the key. You can see the wind swirling around here. Trudeau is going into the wind. But it's a little bit hard to know where it is coming from. It's whirl. Here is Beverly. Flag on the play. Beverly has enough for the first down, but let's see what the penalty's all about. There's Babyar. According to Mike White, that's their best offensive lineman, their guard. Boy, he has played well for them this year. They cannot afford to lose him. They do not have a lot of depth on this Illinois team at any position. 
They have a good starting team. You're absolutely right. But beyond that, they've got some problems. It's going to be holding against the Illini, so Trudeau will not have the first down. But they did establish a little something there. They could get wide. They did get the corner turned with Beverly. Maybe illegally. <laughs> it always helps when you're holding. Holding, holding. on the offense. Tom Quinn and indicating that. Second and 13. Mike White has changed since he's come here. Well, he really believes you need to rush the football in critical situations to win, but you can see the statistic. He's run the ball more effectively over the years since he's been here. He was throwing 41 passes a game when he first came here with some outstanding quarterbacks. Has a good one now, but he can run also. Tudo. The catch is made by Tim Brewster, the tight end at the 25-yard line. That's going to be five yards short of the first down. Tim Anderson over to make the stop. I saw Tim Brewster leaning over him for good reason because he is going to take a shot. He has caught 38 balls this year. Actually, this is his 39th. Trudeau, good protection. He reads the defense well. It's an option route by Brewster. He can break inside or outside. He breaks outside and takes a shot by Cochran there in the rib. And there you see him paying the price. He's been replaced by Scott Davis, the tight end. Third down coming up. Four yards to go. Williams, David Williams, first down catch. Davis a little mixed up the tight end he's a freshman in fact he's not supposed to be on there <laughs> more than mixed up single running back is Rook Trudeau wide open is Williams that's another first down 16 yards The adjustments to direct Trudeau can give you as you look at David Williams, number one, in the middle of your screen there. This is a blitz. You see the blitz coming. Trudeau read it. He gave it to Williams. Williams signaled that he was open. He was wide open. The ball well thrown for a first down. But again, another audible by Trudeau put him in position for a big play. Trudeau now four of eight for 57 yards. Time to throw again. Rook picks up a man. The catch was made by Randy Grant, 87 who was his high school teammate of Livermore. This is the run for the Roses. The winner today with the inside track to the Rose Bowl, the 69th meeting, a sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium. Mike White, wanting to win somehow, return to his native California and play in Pasadena. Beverly, Beverly on a second and two, looks like he has the first down. Mike Mallory, 42, making the tackle. And Illinois putting the pieces together. I would say this crowd is ready. Well, they were ready Thursday and Friday night going through the town. I'll tell you what, these student body are very, very excited about this game. They pitch tents. They have RV vans. They've been here for a long time. First down a moment ago, and Beverly this time, nowhere to go. 
Excellent reaction by Kevin Brooks, 52, out of Detroit. He's a man that's coming along in the estimation of Bo. At the start of the year, he said he could be as good as Curtis Greer now but, playing in the NFL. But Kevin Brooks and the rest of the Michigan front line, their job really is to occupy those offensive linemen, freeing their linebackers, Mallory and Reinhold, really, really to make all the tackles. Second down, 11. Trudeau, and that ball was deflected up front. Trudeau at 6'4", still didn't get it up high enough. And that's going to bring up a third down. Third and 11. Good defensive coaching here in, in, the, in the defensive line, getting their hands up to bat this ball down by Jack Trudeau. You see number 80, Rodney Lyles there, 52 is Brooks, and Brooks swat, swatted it with his right hand. So Brooks has made two fine defensive plays, and now Illinois, third and 11. Big play on this drive. Three wide up. Brewster, the intended receiver. He was pretty well covered on that play by Brad Cochran, number 30. And Michigan went flying up the middle to try to get to Trudeau. Well, third and 11 is the same play they ran before. We saw Brewster catch it and take quite a hit. This one is an option route by the tight end. The ball is pretty good protection. They had a blitz on, but good coverage by Cochran, and Cooper, and the rest of the defensive secondary of Michigan. Did you see Mallory? He did a swan dive trying to get to Trudeau. Well, they call him the wild man. That's right. For good reason. Now, they're going to have to punt, I guess they figure kicking into the wind is too far for Chris White. And so the kick will be Sigourney. High snap. He's trying to keep it in play. He got it very high. And that will be inside the 10 at the 7. 20-yard kick, but oh, so strategically done. That's Miles, number 35, Joe Miles, who got down there to catch it. So Michigan with a three to nothing lead. They have the football when we return. Michigan has a third and two from their own 15-yard line. Michigan playing Michigan football. The clock has been very important in this first quarter as the Wolverines have been able to have ball possession and the field goal of 38 yards the difference right now. Smith giving off to Rick Rogers and Rogers. Let's see what they mark it. They may bring the six in. Let's see. Don Thorpe, 96, was in the middle of all that. And they are indicating a first down. There's the time of possession we were telling you about. Michigan has controlled the football and really kept it away from Mike White's offense. And that has been the key. Triando Mark Ray comes in at a wide out. One of the tight ends comes out, Carson, so that leaves Nelson in. First down for the Wolverine. Oh, what a hit on Garrett. Spun around by Thorpe. That's the man that Michigan kept talking about. He came in here with 32 career tackles behind the line of scrimmage. That ties the school record. Well, he's got 12 this year, but perhaps Michigan is setting up that option. We've seen them run the fullback into the line a couple times. We talked about how good Steve Smith is on running the option, but we have not seen it much here today. We have a change at tailback. Terry Smith comes in for the Wolverines, and also a new fullback, Dan Rice, out of Roxbury, Massachusetts, a sophomore. Back at a nine. Smith and Benson Bean has a first down catch. 13 yard pickup on the play. Well, Bo Schimbeckler is right. Don't underestimate Steve Smith's arm. He's been very sharp here today. You see, right up the middle, number 12, the free safety was on a blitz. Smith called yet another audible and created a one on one situation with Bean for the first down. I think that inflammation in the shoulder has healed. Another look at the blitz. Watch swoop number 12. He's going to come right in the middle of your screen. He's going to get picked up by the center, Tom Dixon, the All-American candidate who sees the free safety coming through and allowed Smith to get the ball off. First down just across the 30-yard line. Smith, Terry Smith, picks up two to the 32-yard line. David Edwards up to make the tackle. Well, they love football in the Big Ten, and this is evidence here. Look at that graphic. 76,127, a new stadium record. The old record, 
Guess what game that was? It was the same football team, Michigan against Illinois. And I tell you, Wayne Duke of the Big Ten and his people do such an excellent job. Every year they break their attendance record that they set the previous year. Second down, nine. Smith intended for Terry Smith. Smith to Smith did not hook up that time. <laughs> You know, Gary, there is a surprise. I, as I mentioned a little earlier, I am surprised that Michigan is not running a little bit more of the option play. Take a look at Illinois' defense. We told you how they penetrate, how they like to blitz. They have difficulty playing a disciplined type of defense, and when you're defending the option, you need to be more disciplined. So I'm a little surprised in that regard. The third and nine, and also surprised, Pat, because they were so effective in that first quarter, just grinding it out. Mm -hmm. And they took themselves out of that, passed once, and then had to settle for the field goal. third and nine. The catch is made by Nelson. He cradles the ball. A first down, just short of the 45. A 12-yard pickup. The leading receiver, Sim Nelson, number 95. He's the tight end. Steve Smith hung in the pocket. He was under a little pressure. But watch Sim Nelson as he split out. This is his 24th catch of the year. A little earlier, he dropped the ball. But Steve Smith has the confidence to come back to him for the big first down. This guy at one time was a linebacker. In fact, Bo made the comment to us last night. He's only played tight end two years. First down. Steve Smith now five of seven. Dan Wright, the sophomore, close to the 50-yard line. Daryl Thompson making the tackle. Daryl Thompson kind of a street fighter in the estimation of Mike White. He'll battle you. He's not all that big. Clemson, Wake Forest. Wake Forest has played some teams pretty tough this year. Clemson, what, has that game coming up later against North Carolina? That should be a good one. Two tight ends in. Second down five. collision that was. That's Big Ten football. And guess who was there? The wild man, Mike Mallory, number 42. I'm going to take a look at it again. I wonder if it's as impressive as the first time. <laughs> he looks like he's feeling it a little bit, though. He's the middle linebacker. This is the play he is supposed to make. As you watch Mallory step into the hole, there's no one there but Mallory. He puts a big hit on Thomas Rook, stops him dead in his tracks. You know, we have an official that's hurt. 
So we're going to have a delay in the action at the 10.55 mark. We'll come back at second and eight for Illinois. I think the officials should get combat pay. Watch this. Ed Hassel, the umpire, watching the play, and Evan Cooper clips him. Flag should have been thrown. Well, he's up and moving around now. Looks like he'll be able to continue. Hassel out of Chicago. Wait a minute. They've taken him off, haven't they? They always have an, an extra official on the sidelines ready for situations like that. Second down, eight yards to go for the Illini. Trudeau, lots of time. Brewster, first down. Tony Gant, 14, the safety on the tackle. When you play a throwing team like Illinois, you have two choices. Blitz and play man-to-man -man coverage or drop back and, and defend. Here's the blitz. You see number 42, the linebacker. But that leaves man-to-man -man coverage in Brewster, number 81. Watch the defense. Like I say, this time they choose to blitz. Play man-to-man -man coverage. In the middle of your screen, screen is the free safety against the linebacker. Uh, free safety against the tight end, Brewster. He catches the ball here for the first down. Pat, I'm surprised how open they've been a couple of times. Up the middle, Beverly. He's across the 40-yard line. Mallory made the stop, and you saw the quickness of Beverly. 179 yards last week. Three 100-yard days this season. And that has really been the difference between this Illinois team, the ability to run the football and play good defense. I want to remind you that we're going to be picking the MVP at the end of this game, the Chevrolet MVP, and Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Here is Beverly again, and Beverly has a first down. So, Pat, we've got to keep Beverly in mind for that as we vote in the fourth quarter. We've got a lot of players that have played well. Kevin Brooks, Beverly. We talked about Mike Mallory on defense, how he's been a factor here in the first half. But this time, he is blocked and taken out of the play right there by number 70. Bob still gives him a little leg whip. But Dwight Beverly follows his block for a big game. First down, just short of the 50. Rooks, Beverly in the backfield. Three to nothing, Michigan. Trudeau, wide open with Mitchell Brookings, the fastest man on the team. 20 yard completion. Jack Trudeau will really spread it around. We've seen him throw it to his back. We've seen him throw to his tight end. We've seen him throw to his wide out. This time to Mitchell Brookings. A deep pass over the middle. Again, he's wide open. He averages 28 yards per reception. You see one of the reasons why. Mike White said he's one of the 10 fastest men in the world. From the 30. Beverly. Beverly finding some room. Lyles, number 80 on the stop. Beverly, in the estimation of Coach White, we stifled him. We never really knew how good he was. We've given him the football, and he's taken off. Second down, seven. Trudeau changing things up at the line. He's got Rooks now moving over. Oh, a mishandled snap. Michigan's got it. Well, they feel that one of the strengths of Trudeau is to change, to read the defense, but he got so cognizant of that, he forgot to take the snap. Well, you can't criticize him because already in the first half, he's put his team in good situations and made good audibles. Here he does it now. There's a mix-up between he and the center. The ball does not come up. And guess who's there to make the recover? Number 42, Mike Mallory, who has been all over the field. Mistake. You can't make him in the big game. Illinois will now set it up defensively, and they're trailing by three. Michigan has the lead if they have the football. Pat, statistically, they have not thrown yet on first down. And this is a thing that Illinois is very well aware of. In last year's game, on 28 first down snaps, Michigan only threw the ball on first down twice. <laughs> Halloween Monday. <laughs> Oxley turnover for the Illini. Let's see what Michigan does with it. Rick Rogers. And Rogers. Got the cross to 35, but there's a penalty flag back at the 25. Boy, that offensive line came off the ball. It's going to be holding against Michigan. Bo is 
He's not smiling now, Pat. No. He does not like mistakes. He's an amazing man, though, a tremendous motivator of young men. He was telling us the story last night. He got so excited, he knocked the lamp over. I was ready to play, though. Not well, but play. <laughs> There's an indication, of, as we just talked about, how Michigan has not thrown the ball on first down. Heckling! On the offense! You face first down! First down 20, they may have to throw now. However, they do not have the field position operating from the 16. Michigan is a very good draw football team, either quarterback draw or tailback draw team. And again, Illinois is very aware of that. Riondo Macre is put out, as is Vincent Dean. Garrett and Rogers in the backfield. Rogers. The blue shirts are there. Vince Osby in particular. Osby got his first start last week. And he's hanging in there tough. Out of Inglewood, California. One of 14 California Junior College players that Mike White has brought in here. So Mike White did take some criticism, as you mentioned, for all the junior college transfers. But people don't realize, and I didn't realize until Mike told me, his first year here, he really only had four JCs. It was a situation he brought in four. He had 25 scholarship players. They felt he couldn't compete. The second year out, he did go out and get some JCs, but he does want to play with Illinois and Big Ten people. Second down and 19 for the Wolverines. Rogers moving out into a wing position. There's that quarterback draw you were talking about. And look at Smith out to the 25-yard line. He's still going to be about 11 yards short of the first down. But that is what puts the fear of, into Mike White. He is really concerned about this play. Again, we mentioned this is where one of the things that Steve Smith does so well. Now, this is a designated call. It's a quarterback draw. He can pick his way through a couple of holes. Now, he didn't, obviously didn't get a first down, but he picked up six or seven yards, and he kept Illinois thinking about it. Steve Smith. As a starter for Michigan, he's won 23 and lost seven. Third and 11. Complete to Rogers. Taylor will try to stop the first down, and he does. Keith Taylor made a first down tackle, saving tackle, at the 35. That was a 10-yard pickup. They needed 11. That's a freshman, number four. And you said they needed 11 yards, but one of the theories of doing this is throw to a fast back underneath the coverage and let him try to pick up the 11 yards on his own, but he does not outrun number four. Keith Taylor puts a stop on him before he reaches the first down marker. Bracken, last time he kicked one 39 yards. Half more back for the Illini. They run. Oh, they almost got that one, and they may have gotten part of it. Flying through the air was Luke Sewell. Luke Sewell, number 39. He got a piece of the ball as an end result of a 14-yard kick. Take a look from the ground as Don Bracken gets the ball. It's a little bit low, but he's trying to get the ball off. Number 39, Sewell's right there and gets a piece of it. Causes a very short punt and gives Illinois a very good field position on the 49. Sewell, who was given a scholarship this year. He was a walk-on player, and he made a big play for Illinois. What a struggle this is. It's Big Ten football. It's physical. The Big Ten Stadium, the band, the color, the excitement, and the winner today. A big stride forward to the Rose Bowl on January 2nd. Take Jack a look Trudeau at Jack Trudeau, the quarterback. Now, we said earlier, and Mike White said his strongest asset is his temperament. He's made it the right step to play the position of quarterback. In the previous play, the last time underneath the center, remember, he fumbled as he tried to call an audible. audible. Let's see how he bounces back and if he can bring his team down to three or seven points. Also, you notice there, now we're having some problems with the scoreboard clock. Also, you notice, Pat, that Babyar has come back in at guard. We had a picture of him earlier going off, being assisted, but he is in at guard for Illinois, the guy they consider to be their best lineman. There he is, number 59. Jeriga, just a sophomore at 71, was a freshman All-American. The scent and the smell of roses. First down for the Illini. 
Thomas Rooks, a penalty flag. Rooks running over people for the first down, but let's see what the penalty's all about. I think we're going to have some motion against Illinois. There's the indication, Tom Quinn. Boy, that negated a fine effort by Thomas Rooks, who was the player of the year in the St. Louis area, Missouri for that matter. A couple of scores now as we have an early start here. Clemson now has been tied up by Wake Forest. Connecticut leading Mass. You mentioned Tom and R Thomas Rooks being from St. Louis, and Mike White really thought he was a breakthrough in the recruiting war. He went into Big 8 country, recruited a Big 8 man, he and Jim Jeriga, the offensive tackle whom everybody wanted, right here from Wheaton, Illinois. So he's making some mid-roads in the recruiting wars here, competing in the Big 10 and the Big 8. Rooks comes out now, and Miles replaces him at fullback. First and 15 for the Illini. He avoids Brooks. Trudeau, nice ad-lib effort. Avoids the loss and picks up some yardage to the 49-yard line. Kevin Brooks went right over the top of him. Al Sensich, 53, made the stop. Jack Trudeau, he is a large man. He is 6'4", like we mentioned, 190 pounds. He is not that quick, but here he does avoid Kevin Brooks, number 52, steps up into the pocket, finds what he can, takes his team out of a bad situation, and actually picks up about six yards. You know the man that Jack Trudeau reminds Mike White of? The late Joe Roth. That's right, who played at California. Second and 12. And now Trudeau's changing the play again. Look up. He gets away somehow from Lyles. And it's complete. David Williams. First down, Illinois. an environment for his quarterback to succeed. And you're going to see some uh, ability here of Jack Trudeau as again he avoids the rush, has the poise to drill the ball to David Williams, number one for another big first down. Earlier we saw the Michigan defense blip. This time they play deep zone. There's two guys deep in the middle. There's number one at the top of the screen. He comes back to the ball once more. Good effort by Jack Trudeau and David Williams. Pat, you know how tough that pass is to throw. That's a long ways to throw it. He's got a shot arm. Here is Rook. Looks maybe for a yard. Quite a collision that time. Tim Anderson, a senior right out of Ann Arbor, making the tackle. Give him a yard at best. But it was interesting as we watched the replay of the Michigan defense, how they're trying to change it up. Sometimes they're blitzing, trying to come after Trudeau, put pressure on him. That play, they lay back and played pass defense. I think you see, Pat, don't you, that they're more and more committed, committed to passing today. They did that against Iowa in that 33 to nothing win. Illinois kind of slanting things that way. This time, they try to cross him up with Rook. Inside the 30 to the 29, he'll be five yards short. Mallory again, and Mallory, whose daddy is the head coach at Northern Illinois, the former coach at the University of Colorado, makes yet another stop. They have to calm him down a little bit. <laughs> He was helped by Mike Boren, who was alongside him for a long time. Boren was a steady guy. He's out for the year. And now they got to talk to Mallory not to go wild out there. <laughs> Here's a brother that plays on the team as well. Free safety Doug Mallory. Third and five. Trudeau, a big William. And he does not have the first down. He's a yard short. Cooper made sure of that. This time, Mike White does have the window to kick a field goal if he so chooses. The Illinois players want to go for it. The offensive linemen indicating they want to go for it. Fourth down. And Illinois will call timeout. Mike White, very, very important decision coming up at the 318 mark of this first half. And Jim Beckler, who leads three to nothing, will await what Mike White can throw at him. Well, this is a fourth and one situation. You mentioned that Chris Babiar, their best offensive lineman, number 59, is back in a football game. He has the most confidence in him. And to his right is his best tackle, Jim Jeriga. So going right might be their tactic. We have a record crowd here today. Memorial Stadium on the campus of Champaign, Illinois and the University of Illinois. A gorgeous autumn afternoon. 
and Big Ten football at its best. And tomorrow, you're going to see a doubleheader on CBS. In the first game, many of you will see the Cowboys take on the Giants, and the doubleheader game then matches the Rams against the Dolphins. And in that game, Eric Dickerson. They can't say enough about Eric Dickerson, and Dan Marino is now the starting quarterback for the Dolphins. Those games plus other regional action. New York City, as well as other major markets, will see only one game. So be sure now to check the local listing and be with us tomorrow here on CBS. What we have now is a fourth down and a yard to go for Illinois, and they are going to go for it. They call the timeout. They trail three to nothing. The line of scrimmage just short of the 25. Last week in a similar situation, Jack Trudeau kept it on a naked bootleg for a, for a touchdown. Trudeau gives the rooks, and he has it. Well, this, on fourth and one, you can make it to the Rose Bowl sometime. Exactly, and this is the kind of situation that has improved the Illinois offense, the ability to run the football in critical situations, exactly what Mike White said his team didn't possess last year. Thomas Rooks, the big fullback, followed the center, and Scott Keogh, the left guard, for the first down. First down at the 22, Beverly. Beverly close to the 17, Tom Hassel, 48, making the stop for the Wolverine. Beverly out of Long Beach, California, and we have a Michigan player down. That's Mallory, who's just played superb football in this first half. Well, the way he throws himself at people, it's no wonder he feels a little shaky, believe me. Time, 2.52 left in this first half. Second down, five. There's a certain atmosphere about a Big Ten game, and we have it all here today. Brookings will be split at the top. Rook, Beverly the running back. Beverly, and they pinched him inside. In particular, Mike Reinhold, number 45 out of Muskegon, Michigan. They played that very well. Third down coming up. Third down and five officially. Williams, Brookens, and Golden now. Three wideouts come in for the Illini. Trudeau with lots of time. Open. Brewster. He's got it. First and goal. It is so difficult to defend this Illinois offense because they spread the ball around. You can't double cover any one receiver. They've thrown to all the wideouts, particularly David Williams. They've thrown to the tight end Brewster. Again, good protection. Once more, the tight end Brewster for a big play and a first down. But that's what makes them difficult because they can spread the wealth around among the receivers. Brewster with three catches in this game. Look, Beverly in the backfield, first and goal. To go. The Rock touchdown. Trudeau roll 
He's looking for his wide receiver who is covered, but he has the ability to dump it off to his big fullback, who's a very good receiver. He dives in the end zone, but that is his 17th catch of the year, so they use their back. This was a drive where we saw Illinois use their best attack, the arm of Jack Trudeau. Michigan scored running the football. Jack Trudeau put his team in position to score throwing the football. I quite have said that, that Thomas Rooks is a very versatile back. He can block, he can run, and as you can see here, he can catch the football, and the Illini have the lead. Thomas Rooks. His first touchdown catch of the season. Mike White says he improves every day. But that drive by Illinois, they did get in the end zone throwing the football, but really they had some critical runs on the ground that kept that drive alive, put them in a position to score. Trudeau on that drive, by the way, was 4 of 4 for 38 yards. Chris White will be kicking off. Kerry Smith and Rick Rogers back deep for Michigan. And Chris White hammers it. At the 20 is where Michigan will have it. What a big day this is on CBS Sports. We'll be switching from football to NBA basketball. The San Antonio Spurs against the Houston Rockets. And a new era will begin in professional basketball, the Ralph Sampson era. I saw him play in college, and I'll only tell you this, he is something special. I've never seen a man that tall play with such grace and finesse. He thinks he's a guard sometimes, the way he can <laughs> handle the ball and the way he moves around. That's coming up later today. From the 20-yard line now, Michigan trailing for the first time. Rick Rogers, and Rogers gets six of them back. Mike Weingrad, 36, making the stop for Illinois. Rogers, the leading rusher in the Big Ten. And now, speaking of the Big Ten, Wisconsin, who has beaten Ohio State the last two years in Columbus, leading Michigan State. As you know, Minnesota now will be looking for a new coach. And here is the reason this game's so big. All the other teams have at least two losses coming in. The two teams unbeaten are in front of us right now. Second down, three yards. Rodgers again. And Rodgers has a Michigan first down. Mark Butchus, 53, making the tackle. Rodgers now with 45 yards on 13 carries. A junior from Inkster, Michigan. You would think, Pat, that Michigan historically has not been a great catch-up football team, which is a lot of time left, but they don't want to get in a passing mode all the time. That is not their game. Straight ahead comes Eddie Garrett. Garrett to the 36, Mike Johnson, 85. Quite a story on number 85, Pat, and you know, there's so much emotion in football, but Mike Johnson's mother passed away before the start of the season. And he has dedicated the season to her. He's a very vocal leader on this team. He said, if we lose today, there will only be memories left. So he is very much ready for this football game. Wants to have some very good memories. Second and six. Smith intercepted. Mike Kevin with his fifth interception of the year. This Illinois defensive secondary has intercepted 16 passes this year. That was just their 17th. They've intercepted four passes in the last three consecutive games. As you watch Steve Smith, the ball is underthrown to Vince Bean. He was hit as he threw. But the ball should not have been thrown there. Mike Kevin had it well covered. He stepped in front of Bean, makes his fifth interception of the season. One of the reasons it was not on time was that Mike Johnson, the man we had just talked about, was in the face of Steve Smith. Mike Kevin with the interception, and Pat, what did they do? They had four interceptions in each of the last three games, and now they have one today. Mike had two interceptions last week against Purdue. He's been hot. And we're going to have a timeout by Illinois. The line eye will have one remaining, but with only 10 seconds left, I'm not really sure. They maybe try to get within the field goal range. 
But the Illini secondary has been active, to say the least. And number nine, Mike Heaven from Del Rey, Del Rey Beach, Florida. He's been a solid performer, a three-year starter for Mike White. The difference in this game right now, the touchdown pass from Trudeau to Rooks. Let's look at it. One more look at Jack Trudeau as he rolls out. Again, a first down play. Illinois mixed it up very well in this drive. They had some critical first down runs for some yardage. And here's Thomas Rooks, a very good receiver, as he catches the ball and dives into the end zone for the lead. And perhaps the Roses. Pat, let's talk a little football here. We have 10 seconds. But you got to figure one thing. Illinois does have the wind to their back. You know how White's been kicking off deep in the end zone. His longest kick has been 50 yards. Now, they've got to get considerably closer before they can try that. They have one timeout remaining. The other thought might be Mitchell Brookins, number 33, their wide receiver. Well, you talked about how fast he was. He runs a 4-3-40, and he can jump. Perhaps they may try to get him the ball deep, either that or hope for a pass interference. You see they're splitting three wide receivers out to the one side. They may just put it up and see if they can get an interference call or the touchdown. Trudeau, Brewster with the catch. Can they get a timeout? They do with three seconds. Tremendous time management by Illinois and Mike White. He had everybody thinking he was going to throw to the other side, as I did, but he came right back to his tight end, Tim Bruce, who has been such a factor. You see the clock, there's 10 seconds when the ball is snapped. Brewster, after he caught this football, had the presence to reach up and call timeouts to the official. You're going to see him pop right back up. Right there, right there. He is calling timeout and gives his team three seconds to get in field goal position, but excellent time management by the Illinois offense. And Chris White will attempt the field goal. We mentioned his longest of the year, 50 yards. That coming against Missouri. That Brewster's a tough tight end. He yep. isn't really a great athlete. They just say he's a battler. This will be a 49-yard attempt. You know, it's even added pressure, I think, for Mike White to be a coach and have his son in this type of situation. Well, I played with John McKay and his son played for the team. And I think Johnny, young John McKay, felt pressure throughout his whole career. 49-yard attempt. The last play of this first half. It is no good. Line drive wide. The one the first half has been. And so Illinois and Mike White have the advantage. They're half a game away from possibly headed to Pasadena for the first time since 1963. But he's got a lot of work ahead of him. This has been classic Big Ten football. We talked about how Michigan scores and highlights after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message from your local station. The fighting Illini of Illinois leading the Wolverines of Michigan at halftime in this battle for the Rose Bowl, 7-3. a junior from Bloomingdale, Illinois. One of the rich traditions of Illini football.
Chad, it's tough to be here. There's some color, there's some excitement. Let's look back now at the first half of play. Analyze for me first the yards rushing. What's happened there? Well, we expect the Michigan to come out, run the ball, and run it effectively. But Illinois has been surprisingly effective on the ground. And again, this has been the difference between this year's Illinois team and last year's team. You see it's almost even in yards rushing. Now, the play selection as a quarterback, you appreciate this. The play selection thus far. Well, again, I've been impressed with Illinois. Very, very balanced team. We've seen them throw the ball successfully, but they've also run it. You see it's 16 to 18 there. Now, Michigan looks pretty balanced there, but the statistics here, Michigan has not thrown the ball on first down. Well, Illinois, for so many years, all they did was throw the football, and they have come out in this game, and they're throwing it well again. And you can see the imbalance there. Illinois has got 161 yards, Michigan only 56, and this has really been their bread and butter. We said Mike White is committed to pass. He's done it today, and here's the seven points as we watch Trudeau roll out this culminated a drive where he threw the ball to three or four different receivers. This time, he chooses his fullback, Rook, the big fullback, who's wide open, makes the catch, and dies in the end zone for the six. And that is the difference of this football game. As Illinois trying to return to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1963. We're going to be back with more of our halftime. The color, the excitement of the big one from Champaign. More than 45,000 people a year are educated on the three University of Michigan campuses. They come from around the world drawn by the international renown of UM teaching and research. Variety, quality, tradition continue to grow at the University of Michigan, a heritage of leadership. In college football in the card section, welcoming us here. Illinois heads into the second half with a statistic they don't want to talk too much about. They trail 7-3, to three and look what's happened the past three years. They have not scored in the second half. They've scored 45 points in the first half the last three years, but the second half is where you win or lose the Rose Bowl. But they have the lead here. Chris White kicking off. Back deep, Rick Rogers, Kerry Smith kicking into the wind this time. And Rogers thought about it, elected not to come out. Let's look at some key people for Michigan. Steve Smith is 6 of 10 in the first half, 56 yards and one interception. Stephon Humphreys, we saw him make a couple of nice blocks for Steve Smith in the back. And Sib Nelson had two receptions for 21 yards. Michigan from the 20-yard line. They led early, 3-0. Then Mike White's team on a 9-yard touchdown pass. The point after with the advantage. Garrett Rogers, the running back behind Steve Smith. To Rogers. Rogers, good vision as he runs to the hole to the 26. And now defensively for Illinois, some key people. Don Torp, a couple of plays he wasn't a factor. Other plays we saw him fight off blocks and make some tackles. Mark Buckus, we, he has been quiet. We have not heard much from him. He is playing on a sore knee. And Quake Swope, he has been active. He's been all over the football field, knocking passes down, blitzing, and making some tackles. Now, Rick Rogers has been shaken up on the play. He's standing, but they're looking him over after that last carry. See him there at the 25? I don't know. He, he's a little bit uh, shaky. He has 51 yards rushing thus far. Tomorrow now in the NFL, game number one of the doubleheader coming up, the Cowboys against the Giants. And then it'll be the Rams against the Dolphins. These games, other regional games. New York City as well as some other major markets, we should remind you, will see only one game. What a good day that'll be, a big afternoon of NFL football on CBS. Now, Shim Beckler has to take Rodgers out of the ball game. He just took a pretty good hit that time. And now Kerry Smith, Number 23 comes in to replace him. Second and four. Smith, and it looks like he has the first down. He needed to get across the 30. Mark Butkus there to make the stop. He did not run the option all that much in the first half. And that was a surprise because we said this is one of the things he does well. But watch Humphreys, number 76 against 96 Thorpe. This is a good matchup. This is where the Big Ten Championship is won or lost. You see Thorpe dive down, but Humphreys took him out of the play because Steve Smith was running an option. 
Stephon Humphrey with the key block and a first down for Michigan. Mark Gray split out to the bottom. Gives to Garrett. Garrett close to another first down. Bob Gleamy, number 38, making the stop. to a game earlier in the Southwest Conference of Importance. Texas Tech is unbeaten in conference play, and they lead Texas. And there is how important that game is. They're the only two unbeaten teams in conference play. Texas had a big win last week over SMU. Second down a yard. Terry Smith. He's struggling, I don't know. He was mid and head air, mid air by Mark Butkus, number 53. Butkus playing pretty well for a guy that was very, very doubtful early in the week. But again, it's surprising knowing that Illinois' strength is Butkus and Thorpe that we haven't seen Michigan run options because when you run the options, you're running away from Thorpe and Butkus in the inside. Thorpe is the guy that can chase you from sideline to sideline. Butkus, they like to anchor in there. He, he comes out of there. Ron Baum replaces him, and now that game's tied up in Columbus. Michigan State and Minnesota. And Iowa leading Indiana. The first down run by Kerry Smith. Just across the 40-yard line. Smith on the option. Back to Smith. 45. He's down to the 36 of Illinois. Swope made the stop, and Michigan has now gone to the option. Well, we talk that college football is a game of adjustments, and Bo Schimbeckler adjusted at halftime. He's come out and run two option plays in this first series. Watch Steve Smith come down the line. He pitches the ball to Kerry Smith, who finds the lane, picks up a block from his tight end there, finds the lane for a big first down. But he did adjust at halftime. He's come out and decided to run this option game. They say Bo can do that as well as anybody. Again, it's difficult because of the type of Illinois runs, which is an aggressive type of defense. It is not an assignment type of defense. Oh, it's a good X and O's man. That was a 23-yard run on the option. First down from the 36. Terry Smith again. He got a yard, and he paid for it. See Swope up there again. 63, Haynes. A lot of orange and blue here in Champaign. I don't think they sell cars or buses or any kind of pickup that doesn't have that color in this area. Second down, nine. Smith with time off the hands of Kerry Smith. That was a bullet. A little too hard, you're right. He threw it too hard. Terry Smith was not that far away from him. You get the feeling, Pat, and correct me if you look at this. Take a look at the defensive secondary of Illinois. Now, again, they will put pressure on you. This time, they drop back and play coverage. You're switching it up right there in the middle of the screen is Terry Smith. The ball was just thrown too hard. No chance to catch that one. Pat, I start to say you get the impression they're doing you a favor when they throw the football. Now, you're probably right. They, they are effective when Steve Smith is out rolling out and throwing some short passes. But here in the situation on third and nine, like he is now, this is not his kind of ball game. Two tight ends, Nelson and Carthens have come in. Vincent Bean and Mark Ray split out at the top. Smith, Nelson got it, and he has the first down. Nice catch by Sim Nelson. David Edwards making the tackle, an 11-yard pickup. Steve Smith responds again, just after I say this is not his kind of game. He completes a third and nine situation. But again, to his tight end, Sim Nelson, who's been their leading receiver all season long, the ball well thrown, man-to-man -man coverage. Nelson against Edwards. Nelson won that one for the first down. Another sustained drive by these Wolverines. They started the game this way. Nelson with three catches this afternoon. First down of the 25. It's Smith to Smith again, and he's out of bounds at the 15-yard line. I have to think that Bo Schimbeckler is going to keep running that option play. We've seen them run it three or four times here in the second half. They've been successful every time they've gotten the ball pitched. Swope coming up to help on the tackle. The thing that makes Steve Smith so effective, Pat, on the option is they say he's the fastest man on the team the first 10 to 15 yards. Well, we've seen quarterbacks like that this year. At, at Texas, we saw Rob Morrishaw. We saw Lance McElhaney, the SMU. Steve Smith fits in that mold. He's, he has won. Uh, he is a role 
this type of player, and he's playing it very well right here in the second half. He's an option quarterback. This is the 10th play of this drive that started from the 20. Second down a yard. Rodgers is back in a tailback. This is Rodgers, and he's thrown for a lot. Sam Ellsworth, he's a freshman from here in Urbana. He made the tackle. A hometown boy, recruited as a linebacker and playing a defensive tackle. It's now third and two. Third and two from the 16. Wolf comes out of the ball game. They get some people up front. Here we go. Physical football. Rogers struggling forward. Daryl Thompson, Ron Baum, 94 on the tackle. And Ed Brady also. And they're going to measure. Officials are now. The staff has been so good over the years have been able to adjust and obviously win the big games like today. First down inside the 15. Garrett and Terry Smith in the backfield. Terry Smith will make it to the 11. A lot of gang tackling. Swope. Mike Johnson, 85, out of Chicago by way of Arizona Western Junior College. In fact, both those men, 89 and 85, played at Arizona Western. Second down, still virtually, what, 10 yards to go? Come in. Let's make a second down and seven. Smith pitching to Smith. He gets away from Edwards, but he doesn't get away from Swope. to carry Smith. Not going to be enough. It'll be fourth down. Swope was there again. He's just everywhere. Third and 11. They're trying to get the ball underneath the coverage to carry Smith and hope that he can run for a first down, but they don't do it because of the coverage by Craig Swope. Good, pretty good protection. But you see number 12, again, he is the free safety. He is up, covering the back, man-to-man -man defense, and there's no first down there. Bergeron, who kicked a 38-yarder in the first half, this time will attempt a 28-yarder. Dan Decker holding. And Michigan has climbed closer. We have a one-point game. Bergeron, two for two today. 7.43 to go in the battle for the Roses. 7-6, to six, Michigan within one, and another Big Ten game. Ohio State has taken the lead for the first time in Columbus. That has bowl implications around that one. Won't be kicking off for Michigan. Dwayne Pugh, he's going to bring this one up. And 
yard. He'll make it short of the 20-yard line. Illinois, let's look at some of the key people. Quarterback Jack Trudeau, he is 12 of 1,861 yards and one touchdown. David Williams, the receiver, caught four balls for 58 yards and quite a factor. Dwight Beverly has seven carries for 26 yards. And Illinois has it at the 19. Pat, uh, interesting statistic. Mike Swanson just indicated Michigan on those two scoring drives, both of them field goals, had the ball for 17 minutes and 36 seconds. That's their football. That's the way they like to do it. Give to Rook. And now key people defensively for the Wolverines. Carlton Rose, he made a big play in last year's game. They may need one from him today. Rodney Lyles, we haven't heard much from him in the first half. We expect him to be more of a factor. And Mike Mallory, he has been a factor. He's been all over the football field. The wild man. He flies around out there. Second down, nine for the Illini. Benson, Williams split out. And also Golden, Scott Golden is in. Pressure on Trudeau. Boy, that is some athletic move, wasn't it? Benson with the completion. That's a tough pass for a right-hander. It is, but there is nobody near Cam ben Benson, number 40, as he catches this ball. There is some sort of mix-up in the coverage. Somebody should have been a little bit closer than this. Watch number 40. There's nobody around him. He's waving his arms. Remember, Trudeau is back there fighting for his life. So the ball comes late. Still, there's nobody there. It's Actually, Benson could have stepped up field. It's third and six. Converting a long loss and picking up four yards. Trudeau tries to thread it to Brewster, the tight end. And Trudeau is hurt. He was hit by Kevin Brooks, and he's down. An anxious moment here for Illinois. And the one thing about Mike White's offense, he gives his starting quarterback about 95% of the work. And we hope Jack Trudeau is okay as he takes a hit here from Kevin Brooks. Pretty good protection early on, but then you can see Brooks fight off a, a block. He's trying to get the ball to his tight end, took a shot right in the chin into the rib. But the point being that if he can make it, Ken Cruz, their backup quarterback, has really not played much or practiced much. He's only thrown eight passes. Trudeau is up and walking around. Illinois will have to kick the football, protecting a one-point lead. Following this, we're going to have quite an NBA game coming your way, the Ralph Sampson era. But we have a lot of football remaining here. Sigourney on fourth down to punt. And he did not hit that one well. Cooper didn't call for the fair catch. And boy, he was pounded. And now a flag has been thrown. Ed Brady was down there as a 32-yard kick into the wind. You have to give him a two-yard buffer zone to feel the ball. And that may be what they did not allow. Cooper Brady, number 61, made the hit in the two-yard zone. Good call by the official. That's Brady out of Morris, Illinois. He's the only linebacker in the top nine that's not from California. The crowd is hot. The 15-yard penalty moves the ball to the 40 of Illinois. And neither one of these teams like to fair catch the ball, do they? Dropped at the 36. Ed Brady, who made the mistake a moment ago, was on the tackle along with Butkin. We mentioned the Ralph Sampson era, one of the premier players to come out of college basketball in a long, long time. Will be making his debut as the Houston Rockets meet the San Antonio Spurs. Also the debut of Tom Heinsohn, a new member of our family. And that game will start it all off. Our coverage of NBA on CBS. Second down, six for the Wolverines. 7-6, Illinois lead. Smith threw that one very hard. Mark Ray couldn't handle it. Triando Mark Ray, who has one catch. It's third and seven. A 
sellout. A capacity crowd awaiting who will take the inside track to the Rose Bowl January 2nd. Illinois, who has not won in Champaign since 1957. They're leading now by one with 6.07 to go in the third quarter. Third down, seven for Michigan. He threw a strike. No, they say he did not catch it. Benson Bean did not have it. Bo Schimbecker thinks he has it. I thought Smith did a fine job throwing the ball, but evidently he trapped it. Well, let's find out here as we watch Steve Smith drop back. He does get a little bit of a rush. He's going to deliver the ball to Vince Bean, number 25, his foot in. He went down low, and you really can't tell whether he trapped it or not there. Another look at Steve Smith. The ball did, he threw the ball exceptionally hard. There's no question about the strength of his arm. Again, you can't really see there whether Bean trapped it or not. Well, they're going to have to punt the football. Don Bracken will do it. Don Bracken. Pat Moore goes back for the Illini. Big rush. Oh, he just got that one underway. That will make it in for the touchback. Earlier, Sewell partially blocked one. He almost got another one. That was a 37-yard punt. With the football, Illinois. The Illinois leads Michigan at the 554 mark of the third quarter, 7-6. This game is drawing national attention. It's drawing attention from the Bulls. They are here to watch, including the Cotton Bowl. There's never been a Big Ten team playing the Cotton Bowl. And Jack Trudeau is alive and well. He's back into the game after that shaky play when he was hurt earlier. Setting up the screen to Rook. And Rook gets the yard, and Trudeau was dumped again in the end zone. <laughs> the official, Tom Quinn, checking to see if he's all right. Well, he looks all right. He got a little smile on his face. Again, the rush. You're supposed to get a rush on a screen, but he gets a little hit there by number 80, Rodney Niles, in the chest after he releases the ball. I've been there a few times, just uh, like that. I'm disillusioned. <laughs> I've seen you backpedal a couple of times <laughs> in your pro career. There's Trudeau, good-looking guy from Livermore. That's south of the Sacramento area in California. Here's a delay up the middle. Rook and Rook and Living for the first down. To the 45. 45 of Michigan. And the Illini of a 35-yard run. Good call by Jack Trudeau and Mike White. When you pass the ball as effectively as Illinois does, the draw play should be your, your featured run play. And that's exactly what happens there. As 42, Thomas Rook follows some blocks, picks up a nice block by his outside receiver there, and then just cuts back one more time for a big game. But this is the kind of running attack that, again, was lacking from Illinois, but a kind of running attack that is so effective when you're good via the air. And this is, again, we're going to see another cutback. We've talked, we've talked about the cutback a couple of times today as Rook reads his downfield block very well. Good vision he's showing here following all his blocks. That was the longest run from scrimmage this year for Illinois. Trudeau rifles one, but that's out of bounds. David Boatwright, 88 over there. The longest run of the year from the line of scrimmage by Rook, the 35. Here is a close one. Code Wright certainly did not have a speed in. Didn't have possession of the ball. Second down, 10. Illinois. Boy, it's been a long time since they've been to Pasadena. And they're on the threshold. They want to build this one-point lead into more. Trudeau to Williams. First down to the corner. David Williams and Jack Trudeau are having some fun. There you saw some smiles on the face. David Williams, this time he comes underneath again. Earlier in the game, we saw him deep, and in this, it was set up by some of those deep passes that he caught. But a good receiver, a good reception by David Williams. Well thrown. He beats the linebacker right there. Scoots up the sideline. First down. 23-yard completion. So a 35-yard run. 
a 23-yard completion, and the Illini are on the move. Five of 81 for David Williams. With 29 catches coming into today. He was hurt last year. Hurt his shoulder. Set out the entire year. Got very discouraged. What do we got here? We got some lines tangled up. <laughs> the chain gang has been chained down. Big Ten football. It is rough. Even for, you know, for the chain gang, too. They heard an official today. No one is immune to this. <laughs> Illinois now on this first down brings in two tight ends, Brewster and Davis. is very, very big in the SEC. Auburn, Florida, and Georgia, what a battle those three are having. Beverly, and Beverly got some yardage on very little operating room. Brad Cochran, one of the linebackers filling. Going to bring up second down and eight. Maybe this crowd's into this game. There's Tennessee. They're having a good year. Johnny Majors, 5-2. There's Georgia against Temple. That's a big one coming up next week. Trudeau. Inside the five. That's Golden. Scott Golden, the senior. First and goal for Illinois. The ability to throw the football is always been tough for both Tim Beckler's teams to defend. You're going to see Jack Trudeau, the big guy, getting outside of containment, drills the ball to Scott Golden, number 86, for the first down on the four-yard line. Remember, Illinois has not scored the last three years in the second half against this Michigan team. This one is for the Roses. First and goal at the four. Look. Let's get it a little closer. Vince D. Felice, number 90, making the stop for the Wolverine. Second and goal. Mike White. The Illini leading by one. Seven to six. 3.30 left in the third quarter. And Bo Schembechler's defense backed up to the two-yard line where it's second and goal. Two tight ends are in. Looks again. He's short by a yard. Wanted to go airborne, but he was intercepted. Memories of last year. Third and goal. I imagine that Mike White, in his mind right now, is that they got to a fourth and goal at the two, could have won it a year ago, did not punch it in. And here they come to a third and goal at the one. will be split to the top of the screen. Everybody else in tight. Trudeau. Oh, he fumbled it, and Michigan's got it. Twice, Trudeau has had troubles with the snap from center. And that is Carlton Rose. You said he needed a big play. That's a big play. And you're right. Twice he's had trouble with the center. Twice they've been in scoring position. The Roses are on the line. The, the ball comes back. He has never has possession of it. He's trying to get the ball to Beverly, his tailback, but never could quite get the handle. Two critical errors by Jack Trudeau underneath the center. And Watch the reaction. reaction by Mike White. So close and yet so far. The threshold, he still hasn't crossed it. Michigan, at the seven, first down. Terry Smith, Smith's seen a lot of action due to the fact that Rick Rogers has a bruise, what is it, thigh or arm, his arm. He is expected to come back. But Terry Smith now doing the job for him at tailback. Here's a situation where Illinois' defense, though, has to pick up his offense. His offense has made a couple of mistakes in scoring position, but the, if the Illinois defense can force Michigan to punt, Illinois again will get the ball in good field position. Ohio State now by a 28-21 count. And saw Notre Dame, who's been rolling since that Miami game. On a second and five, Eddie Garrett for a couple of yards. Okay, let's go to New York for an NCAA Today report. Here is Brent Musburger. Gary, here 
is the Auburn touchdown. It's Bo Jackson for 55 yards. It's beautiful out of the wishbone. Florida buys the fake. Jackson gets outside. He makes a strange cut. You would have thought he was coming right into traffic, but because of his great speed, he outruns the safety man. 7-0 Auburn. Back to Gary and Pat. Third down and four here for the Wolverines. Smith. Jim Nelson, the intended receiver, and Michigan will have to punt the football. again and again Sewell getting close to it pass more oh what coverage by Michigan coming down there was Bob Perryman number 37 of sophomore 45 yard kick no return but Illinois will have it at their own 40 they lead it by one at Memorial Stadium you can't get weather any better than this, then you're going to have to look long and hard to find a more exciting football game. First down for the Illini at the 40. Trudeau to Rook. He'll go for five, maybe six. Tony Gatt, Brad Cochran. The second half, we saw Michigan coming out in their first uh, possession, Gary, and run the football, get themselves in position for a field goal, make it 7-6. Uh, to six. We saw Illinois on their first possession, this possession in the second half, a most critical possession, have the ball three plays and punt. Their second possession, they found the way to get the ball to Rooks. They marched the ball downfield, got down to the two-yard line where Jack Trudeau fumbled. That's been the story. But each time they fumble, they've gotten right back up, haven't they? And fought back. Let's see if they can again. Trudeau to Brewster. Brewster, just a hard-nosed worker. He was a walk-on after transferring from Pasadena Junior College. One of the reasons that Jack Trudeau has been so successful throwing the ball today and all season long has been the protection of his offensive line. Chris Babier, number 59, his right guard, he meets the defender. 57, Anderson, the blitzing linebacker, gives Trudeau plenty of time to throw the ball. Good block. Babier had to leave the game earlier, but he's in there now at a Bloomingdale, Illinois. Offensive line, they're going to have most of them back next year. First down, Trudeau, off to Rook. Rook's a nice cut in the open field. That's him a couple of yards. And shaken up is Sintich. Sintich, number 53, getting up slowly. We're going to take this opportunity for an update on that Notre Dame game. Once again, here's Brent. Gary, the Irish have struck twice. This is a beautiful catch by Milt Jackson, a sophomore out of Fairfield, Iowa. Here's Steve Berline. Watch Jackson sky. He gets up in the air. One foot comes down and bounds. The Irish have just scored again. They go up by two touchdowns on maybe 14-0. Back to Gary. Brent, thank you. That's the end of the third quarter. It's Illinois 7, Michigan 6. Michigan, Illinois is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. Well, we've got 15 minutes now to decide who's going to the Rose Bowl. The scoring thus far, Bergeron first, 38 yards, and then Trudeau came back. Nine-yard touchdown strike for Thomas Brooks. There it is. And here's the touchdown, the only touchdown of the game as Trudeau throws to his fullback, Thomas Rook. And since that time, Michigan added another field goal, and Trudeau to Williams, wide open. He's to the 20. 10, touchdown.
second touchdown pass of the day to Jack Trudeau. This one going to Williams from 46 yards out. Chris White the point after. And what a way to start the fourth quarter. Williams has six catches now, 127 yards, and a touchdown. The sophomore from Los Angeles, California, as you mentioned, he's been catching balls all over the field today. Now, this ball is well thrown by Jack Trudeau in perfect stride. Number one, David Williams catches the ball, and he cuts across the field, and there's nobody there to catch him as he runs into the end zone. So the ball was so well thrown as he dives in for the Roses. David Williams, number one. And he's giving us a little high five. They're thinking Pasadena, perhaps. Another look at David Williams. And so Illinois a little closer. They lead it 14 to 6. Champagne is excited. David Williams, the man who caught that 46-yard touchdown pass. The first point scored against Michigan in three years in the second half of play since 1979. Chris White with a win to the back, and that one will not be returned. Well, some excitement here. What a great afternoon it will continue to be as we'll be switching from football to basketball. Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn be standing by to bring you this. The San Antonio Spurs against the Houston Rockets. Artist Gilmore against Ralph Sampson. And I just know everyone wants to see how Sampson's going to fare. I'll tell you, he's going to do very, very well. Steve Smith, he's the quarterback. He's the man that set them up for the winning field goal last week against Iowa. He's in the same type of situation today. Eddie Garrett, Rick Rogers. It's catch-up football now for Michigan. Smith, complete to Rogers, who's come back in, and he's very close to the first down. Ed Brady, David Edwards combined on the stop. There's Jack Trudeau, but that was Michigan's first pass on first down in this game in 20 attempts. What we have here is an interesting situation. At the top of the show, we said that Michigan could not afford to go for the tie, but the posture they're in right now is they have to go for two if they score just to tie this one up now. They, they, they really need two scores. Michigan needs two scores to get to Pasadena. Again, we'll explain that. It's head-to-head -head competition. If both these teams end up with the same record, and they would tie today, Illinois would go. That was the first down. Smith completes a carry Smith. And they chop away another five yards. Mike Kevin over to make the tackle. Of course, we never would count a Michigan team out. The last week was kind of indicative of this Michigan team. The Michigan offense turned the ball over three times last week against Iowa in the fourth quarter, but their defense only gave up three points. And when Michigan's offense got its opportunity in the fourth quarter, with 90 seconds left, Steve Smith brought them down, put them in field goal position for the big win. A lot of time remaining in this one. Second down, six. Smith gives off to Kerry Smith, and he comes out of there. There's a penalty flag as he makes it to the 36-yard line. Osby and Taylor make the stop, but they're going to bring it back. A penalty against Michigan. Holding. That was a 31-yard run that's wiped out, and Bo doesn't like that at all. And we saw Steve Smith earlier throw the ball a couple times in first down. Now he goes back to the run as Kerry Smith goes right up the gut behind his two All-Americans, Tom Dix in the center, Stephon Humphreys. A big hole there for Kerry Smith, but they'll bring it back. Mistake. It moves it back to the 24-yard line. Holding. Holding. On the after. Penalties. That's two against Michigan for 20 yards. We're at Memorial Stadium, a record crowd watching the battle for the Roses. Illinois has just scored. They've taken a 14 to 6 advantage. And Michigan, after a penalty, negating a 31 yard run, has second and 16. 
Smith trying to hit Eddie Garrett, the fullback. Wasn't anybody open on that play. Good pass defense by Illinois. Nowhere for Steve Smith to get rid of the football. Linebacker Haynes had dropped off on number 32. Third down. Third and 16. That's the Oreo 64 that Bo will send the play through. But you hit the nail on the head. Third and 16. This is not the type of situation that Mich Michigan likes to be in. I'll tell you what, in big games, Bo doesn't like to make mistakes either. And that holding call is really big right now. Garrett and Smith from the backfield. Mark Ray and Bean split out. The second sack of the day. protecting this time but it's not a good kick into that win and they're going to get it they beat illinois at the 40 of michigan a 23 yard kick illinois excellent field position the illini leading 14 to 6 trying somehow to stab years of frustration let's take this opportunity to go back to new york Brett has an update on Auburn. Gary, Auburn's gone in again. Watch quarterback Randy Campbell. He reads the defense perfectly here. Keeps it and goes in from the four. And now Wayne Peace will have to put it up for Florida. He trails by two scores. Back to Gary. All right, Brett, thanks for keeping us posted. Here's Trudeau giving off to Rooks. Rooks for five. Rodney Lyles, 80, making the tackle. The temperament of Jack Trudeau. This is something that Mike White talks about all his quarterbacks as you look at Don Thorpe. He's the man who came up with that big sack. But Jack Trudeau, the temperament, and we say he came up, he had two critical fumbles in situations where they're in scoring position, but he bounced back to throw the touchdown pass to David Williams in the last possession. Those are pretty good stats. The time is Beverly, and he's not going anywhere this time. As Nate Rogers, 61, a backup nose guard, out of Warren, Ohio, was there. We've got some important scores we want to pass along to you right now. Kansas State, who left two to nothing earlier, all of a sudden they woke the Cornhuskers. Now Florida trailing Auburn. Florida's unbeaten in that game. And Mississippi State leading Ray Perkins' team. Notre Dame really rolling now, Pat. They're on the roll. Remember, they wore the green jerseys last week as we were watching Illinois wearing the all blue today. Who did they beat last week? I can't remember. Third down. <laughs> Seven yards to go. Trudeau and Jennifer Williams. That play just didn't develop very well. Some pressure on him by Mike Mallory and Kevin Brooks. That's one of the few times Williams hasn't been wide open, so they'll pump the football. Sigourney will come in. And Illinois not able to capitalize on that short punt. Thus far, Sigourney averaging 32 yards, 32.3 to be exact. And going back will be Cooper. He is second in the Big Ten in punt returns. He got a nose high, but I think he may have gotten too much. No! They're going to count it at the one. You cannot And you saw some of the emotion of college football by Chris Sigourney, the punter. And so now Michigan trailing 14 to 6. They're 98 yards away from the goal line. They're having a tough struggle here. For the third time today, Michigan.
Michigan starts inside their own 10-yard line. They are 98 yards away. And the smell of roses, the scent, is starting to come very strong if you're an Illinois fan. They lead it 14 to 6. Coming out of there, Kerry Smith, and that gets some yardage back in a hurry. He's across the 10-yard line. Greg Swope making yet another tackle. Well, Michigan's backed up on their two-yard line. They've got to get the ball out there to give Steve Smith some room to run the option and to throw the football. But here's a good opportunity to do that because they give the ball to Kerry Smith over the left side, picks up, picks up eight yards, and that's going to put him in a position to get a first down. There's your time remaining in this fourth quarter. It's second down, two yards to go. Smith again. Smith has the first down to the 15-yard line. Mark Butkus made the stop. I've been a little surprised. We saw in the third quarter how Michigan ran that option play so successfully. When, when yeah. we saw Smith come down and pitched the ball to Kerry Smith, got some big games, they have not come back to it. Very good point. It looked like that was all they were going to force speed. And all of a sudden, they went away from it. Well, that's right. And again, this Illinois defense is not well suited to defend the option. They run, their linebackers do run very well, but... Smith on first down. Bean! He caught the ball, and it looked like he caught a deflected ball. It took a long time getting there. <laughs> Again, throwing into that win. 18-yard completion. First down. Well, you mentioned a significant point. He is throwing the football against the win. It's a little play-action fake. Didn't really fool anybody. He gets the ball to Vince Bean over the defender. A little earlier, that pass was intercepted by the cornerback. But this time, Vince Bean is able to make the catch. The grace of Vince Bean. That was not deflected, was it? It just took a long time getting there. First down catch. On the 33, Terry Smith, Mark Butchett has him in his grasp at the 36-yard line. Second down, maybe eight. The Oreo will come again with the play from Bo Schembechler. Again, remember this. If Michigan would end up in a tie today, Illinois and Michigan end up with identical records. The Illini would be in Pasadena. Watch 61, Ed Brady. He is the middle linebacker. His responsibility is to stop the inside plays. He's there. He gets some help from 53, Mark Butcher. Second down, a long seven. Smith with a blitz. That's close again, the safety. Oh, was he there in a hurry. Third sack of the day. We told you they like to bring people, and you're going to see Craig Swope come from the outside. Steve Smith certainly does not see him. He has no chance to get rid of the ball. A big play by the Illinois defense. This is what might get them to Pasadena. But Steve Smith never had an opportunity to see Swope. Earlier in the game, Swope came from inside. That time, he came from outside. Third and 15 for the Wolverines. receiver was Bean, Keith Taylor defending. Michigan will have to punt the football. Bracken has really been struggling. Averaging 32 yards. Kicking into the wind. Art Villardos will be snapping the ball. Larry Sweeney was shaken up and he's not in there as Passmore is back for Illinois. That's not a good kick. But they're going to get a roll on it. And it will be downed at the 42-yard line of Illinois. 30-yard kick. Bracken has struggled. Michigan got to get the football back. They trail 14-6. Update, Florida strikes back. A blitz is on by Auburn. Wayne Peace picks it up beautifully along with his lineman. Rolls right. He'll go to freshman Ricky Nateel. And Nateel does the rest with a slick outside move. 41 yards. 
14-7, Auburn leading Florida. Back to Gary and Pat. All right, Brent, from the southeastern part of our country to the Midwest, Big Ten country. Mike White, his team with good field position at the 42. In fact, the last three times they've started drives from the 41, the 41, and now the 42. Trudeau gives to Rook. And Rook to the 45. Tim Anderson, 57, making the stop. Time, we now have eight minutes left in this game. Chris Bavier, number 59, the right guard for Illinois. He's had a very good football game. He's given Jack Trudeau plenty of time to throw the football. Here you're going to take a look at a good isolation of him coming out on another man who's had a good day, 42, Mike Mowry. Looks in the second half has 54 yards rushing. Trudeau looks once, twice. He hits the freshman Scott Davis, all 6-7 of him. And he apparently is just short of the first down. But Mike White is not sitting on this lead. He's come out and he threw the ball here on second down. It's interesting. The pass got him this far. He believes in the pass. He's committed to the pass. And he's going to use it here in the fourth quarter. And again, the poise of Trudeau to stay in there. Wait for somebody to clear. Iowa, who was shut out by this Illinois team. 33 to nothing. It's third and one. Brooks runs into a lot of congestion. And they're going to measure. Brooks, no, they aren't going to measure. They gave it to him. Brooks has really her earned every yard up the middle, hasn't he? Well, he's been that big back that Mike White has been looking for here in Illinois, and he's a very good receiver, as we've seen a couple times today. He caught the touchdown pass, he's caught some screen passes, he blocks well, and he's a good runner. First down for the Illini. Beverly, no place to go. But time now, starting to be the ally of Illinois. Kevin Brooks made the tackle. Very much a factor. As we've said a couple of times, Michigan needs to score twice to have a chance for the Roses. Cam Benson and Scott Golden check in. Three wideouts on a second and nine. And they give up the middle instead to Rooks. And the maize and blue are equal to that one. Sinsich, 53, Anderson, 57. And now a third down. Sinsich, they said, improves all the time out of Cleveland, Ohio. Third down, 10 yards to go. Trudeau. Trying to set something up, and he just threw that ball into the turf. He didn't want to have any kind of an interception right now. And that's a good play by Jack Trudeau. That's just as good as some of the other plays he's made today when he's completed the ball because he saw that the Michigan defense read the screen, and he got rid of it. But it means they're going to have to punt the ball with 5 minutes, 40 seconds left in the game. Both teams have all their timeouts remaining. Sigourney will kick to Cooper. There is Cooper. And Sigourney, the man we mentioned, out of Elgin, Illinois. Averaging this year 41.7, but today only 33 yards a kick. And he hit this one very high. Cooper calling for the fair catch. And at the 11-yard line is where Michigan will have it. 36-yard kick that time. So Michigan faced with another long drive. They've not had the field position here in the fourth quarter. And the Wolverines are trailing. That shows you the difficulty Michigan has had in the second half. They just haven't had field position. Give some credit to the Illinois special team and the punter right there. It's the gurney number five. Two of them inside the 10. This one at the 11. Steve Smith on first down. Bean. Oh, that is a fine catch. No, they say he's out of bounds, and Bo Jim Beckler is in sense. Here is the end of the play. Vince Bean. Now it's one at least one foot has to come down in bounds. It looks like it's
his left foot did come down in bounds. It should have been a reception. That was a catch. I understand why Bo was upset on that one. He, he was, was right closer in, than we are, He was too. right in front of, front of, in front of Bo. In front of the, he was closer than the official. That was a tough throw to make. He had to throw it over the defender, and he got it there. We'll look at it after this play. Second down, 10 from the 11. Smith completes it, and they're going to be a yard short of the first down. Eddie Garrett receiving it. Carter, Weingrad made the stop. Let's go back to that controversial catch. One more look at the catch by Vince B. Now, the official says that he was did not have possession of it or that his feet did not come in bounds. The ball was thrown over the defender. Now, there's Bean. He's got possession of it. There's his feet. You can see Bo Schimbeckler is right there. It's right in front of Bo Schimbeckler. Really, both feet were in. That should have been a reception. The official was right there also. It looked like the official was screened by the coaching staff there. Now the measurement to see if that last one was enough. It's short of the first down. Smith thrown the ball very well the last two plays. Two tight ends now. Nelson and Carson check in. 5-17 left. A nervous 5-17 for Mike White. Terry Smith, he has the first down. Weingrad making the stop at the 24-yard line. There's a good look at Mike White. He said when he came here to Illinois, he wanted to be contending every year. He is doing now. He's got his program in a position where they're challenging every season. That's right where he wants to be. A very modest man. He hasn't taken all the credit. He gives a lot of credit to his coaches. He's developed quarterbacks through the years, but... He really puts it in a good perspective. Nice man. First down for the Wolverine from the 24. On the option, Smith. Played very well by Archie Carter, 84. He had a career-high 12 tackles last week against Purdue. However, it looked like Steve Smith could have pitched the ball there once again to carry Smith for a big game. Smith elected to keep the ball. Well, look, here is Steve Smith. He's come down the line on 23. He is Terry Smith. Now, he looks like he is open. Smith decides to keep the ball, but there was a lane there for Terry Smith to catch it and go right down the lane. Instead, it's second and seven. Oh, he threw that one too hard, but he had to hurry it. Pressure was coming. Being the intended receiver, and he's got to look at his play selection list and come up with a third down. Third and seven. We're going to take a look at Vince, Clean Vince Bean. He's at the top of the screen. Somebody clears out. A back comes out, or the tight end comes out underneath him, Le leaves some room for Vince, Vince Bean. The ball was thrown too hard. It hit his hands, but it's too hard. He was only five or six yards away from the quarterback. It's tough to catch those. Third down, seven with 404 left. 12 of 23, 111 yards, one interception. The blitz. Incomplete, Edwards defending. Archie Carter was putting pressure on Steve Smith. It's fourth down. And it looks like Bo decided whether he was going to go to it on fourth down. But on third down, you're going to see the pressure on Steve Smith, a blitzing, penetrating defense that really does not give Steve Smith the time to get rid of the ball. And here's the defensive secondary of Illinois. You're going to see it's a man-to-man -man coverage, putting pressure on. Everybody's hugging their receivers. The ball is thrown late, and there's Edwards against Nelson, the tight end. Racket will kick. Less than four minutes left in the game. 3.59 to be exact. Passmore is back. No big pressure put on this time, and he hit this one pretty well. Passmore, his first fair catch of the season. You think Mike White told him to do that? A 38-yard punt, and Passmore, a senior out of North Chicago Heights, Illinois, cradled that one. Another Auburn update. Back to New York. Let's go to Brent Musburger. 
Gary Auburn can hit you in so many ways. Watch the little train. Lionel James come chugging along here. 17 yards. The Gators overrunning. Missed the tackle. And now it's 21-7 Auburn. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Illinois now from their own 35-yard line. 3.51 left in the game. They have a 14-6 lead. Thomas Rooks will pick up a couple of yards. Vintage, Kevin Brooks making the tackle. Here in the fourth quarter, though, the game has been a game of field position. Michigan has been backed up all fourth quarter under the shadow of its goalpost. Illinois actually has had very good field position the last three series. It hasn't done anything with it. Line of scrimmage now the 37-yard line. Second down eight for the Illini. Vincent split out. Everybody else is in tight. Trudeau to Beverly, and that doesn't get very much. That'll bring up third down. Dee Felice makes the tackle. It's third down and seven. Coming up next, basketball. Ralph Sampson style. San Antonio against Houston. Stay with us. First NBA game coming up in this season on CBS. My partner was four years old. <laughs> you were 44, eh? <laughs> Third and seven. Trudeau! Oh, what a catch. That's a first down by Brewster. Give Mike White some credit. Again, a critical situation on third down. He goes right back to what he does best. He calls a pass play. Good protection there. They pick up the blitz. And there's Tim Brewster, who seemingly has been wide open all day over the middle. Another look. I'm sorry, at Jack Trudeau. Brewster's caught five balls for 63 yards. Trudeau, under a little bit of, bit of duress, still manages to get the ball right in the numbers. First down now at the 47-yard line. The pitch comes to Rooks. And Carlton Rose will make the tackle. Pat, we're going to take this opportunity to thank the Illinois Athletic Director Neil Stoner and head football coach Mike White and Sports Information Director Tab Bennett for their help and hospitality during our stay here. People from Michigan, athletic director Don Cannon and head football coach Bo Schimbecker. From the 48-yard line, second down and nine, and look at Bo. Oh, he's hot. He didn't want a timeout, and his team called one. Michigan asked for a timeout. And Bo did not want to. He had two remaining. A frustrated Michigan team, an expectant Illinois team. One forty-six to play. Illinois. They have not been to Pasadena since 1963. They're a minute 46 away from that. Michigan, under Bo Schimbeckler, has been to the Rose Bowl seven times. And Illinois trying to keep their poise, their composure to finish out here. They have a second and nine. Two tight ends are in. Rooks and Beverly in the backfield. Rooks. Boy, he's run tough today. Mike Mallory, yet another tackle for Michigan. You see the time remaining. Timeout, Michigan. And Michigan will have one left. No, it's Illinois. That's, no, wait a minute. The official pointed the wrong way. I thought that would be unusual. He was pointing towards Illinois. He's happy about things. Well, he's a California native. He likes to play out there in Pasadena. I'm sure he's got lots of friends who will come down and see him play. Well, it's really been the resilience of this young man as you look at Jack Trudeau. We said he fumbled those two times in critical situations, but he bounced back. He didn't let them bother him. He led his team to two touchdowns. He threw two touchdowns. Yeah, he had 21 and 31. That's pretty good statistic. Best game he's had really since that Iowa game when he was 23 of 32. A very similar type game. In their defense, too, Craig Swope has played so well for Illinois as well. You're trying to figure out your MVP, aren't you? <laughs> it's a pick. It is tough. Can we give it the whole team? 
Now, the reason that Illinois figures that they win today, they're on their way, is they play at Minnesota, who's obviously having a difficult year, Indiana at home, and at Northwestern. You never know, but it figures to go their way. Now, Michigan's got a real tough one at home. That's on the gridiron in Ann Arbor against Ohio State. It's interesting. Illinois has played both Iowa and Ohio State, and now Michigan here at home. So that's been an advantage for them. Mike White said we had a perfect setup. Third down and four. They're going for the Roses. And Rooks will not get the first down. Vincic, 53, made sure of that. And now another timeout is going to be asked by Michigan, and that is their last timeout. Well, Pat, 132 still left. You're going into the wind, and you're not going to have good field position unless they come up with a block. That's exactly right. I'm expecting Michigan to try to block this punt, come up with a big play. That's what they need, and they still need to get the ball back, if, even if they were to do so. Sigourney, who has done such an excellent job of placing his punts, will go back. I want to thank our statistician, Mike Swanson, our spotter, Steve Bear, for their excellent work. And I will tell you, our producer, Rick Lasavita, he has been hot this week. He's been rolling around, <laughs> and Bob Fishman with all those pictures. Rolling around is right when you talk about Lasavita. This is really a shock. Texas Tech leading Texas. That's the third quarter. Brent and Arrow will have scores and highlights of that game and others. And then Ralph Sampson and our start of the NBA season. I don't know if you uh, are aware of this, the truck, but I wish you would look around the sideline. We're gonna have some goalposts coming down here in a little bit. <laughs> they have people poised and ready on the side of the field. Of course, state troopers, they have two state troopers underneath the goalposts. That's not a very good snap, but he hit it. Cooper, he's gonna bring it out of there. He's gonna get tackled for the safety. Beckler doesn't look like didn't look like he agreed with Evan Cooper's decision here, but you got to give Cooper some credit. His team is behind. He's trying to make something happen. It is a dangerous play, but with a minute left in the football game, he's trying to do his best to help his team out. It was a poor decision. You see 35 Joe Miles there to make a tackle for the safety. Looked like Cooper is in slow motion as compared to Miles, the way he was barreling in there. Well, this record crowd is starting to celebrate. Sixteen to six is now the score. All right, we told you about that NBA game coming up between the Spurs and Rockets. Let's go down now and join Dick Stockton with a preview. Thank you very much, Gary. And the Houston Rockets have just taken the floor for their pregame warm-ups, and all eyes are on Ralph Sampson, the great All-American from Virginia, who's going to make his NBA debut in just a few minutes with the Houston Rockets as the Rockets go against the San Antonio Spurs here in Houston, Texas. They think he may be one of the best centers ever to play the game. He's got a long way to go. This will be his very first step, and there is much anticipation. I'll be here along with Tom Heinsohn for the game coming up shortly. Right now, let's go back to Gary Bender in Champaign, Illinois. Sixteen to six now our score. Illinois adding two points to that advantage on the safety by Joe Miles. And Bo Schimbeckler, who in 15 years has gone to seven Rose Bowls, will not go this year. And Mike White trying to be so careful still with a minute 22 left. We have nine men up for Illinois. 
expecting the onside kick. Now, you kick from the 20 after a safety, but you can still, if you kick it 10 yards, get on it. Slopey, Todd Slopey, will be attempting the point, or I should say, the onside kick. Like Illinois got it. We'll have to wait until the unpiled at the 35-yard line. They got it. That's Luke Sewell who came out of there with it. This crowd is poised and ready. Champaign, Illinois will never be the same. <laughs> that one is getting set to break loose. It's been a long time, 1963. If they've been able to go out to Pasadena, that was Dick Butkus and that group, and you can see right now where they want to be January 2nd. They're going to have some fun tonight. Oof. You see a lot of blue and orange around this town. Michigan has no timeouts remaining. disappointment of Michigan the excitement for Illinois you gotta feel happy for the kids in Illinois they waited so long for this moment through, through so many heartaches Mike White, White came in here four years ago picked the program off the ground they're on the way to Pasadena the big one is drawing to a close Illinois coming in with great expectation. <laughs> Mike White trying somehow to treat this game like any other game. There was so much hoopla all week long, and they have him on his shoulders, and Illinois is headed to Pasadena. for the touchdown. Michigan, Illinois is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll return with more coverage after this word from your local station. This is CBS. They've begun their celebration and here was the final seconds of the game. <laughs> Looks like ants coming on the field. Have you ever seen goalposts come down as quickly? The Chevrolet most valuable players. Well, for Michigan, we chose one player. That's middle linebacker Mike Mallory. He was all over the field. We chose a player on defense for Illinois, Craig Swope. And also wide receiver David Williams had six catches for 127 yards and a touchdown. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Illinois, 16-6. They've caught up with the Ohio State and the Michigan. And Illinois is on the way. The inside.